Well, here we are again. What a day of Overwatch it has been. I'm Doa, there's Monte Cristo. We're back for the final match of the day. Should be a pretty fun one. I don't know, what do you think? Hongjo Spark, Toronto Defiant, make your pick. You predict right now who's going to win it, Monty. I, I predicted during the pre-show, Doa. You predicted just didn't again. watch it. Hey, maybe <laughs> some of our viewers at home haven't been watching the entire day. I watched, I know who you picked. Uh-huh, who was it? You picked the Spark. Yeah, I did. Like Good I job. did. Yeah, See, yeah, I told you yeah. I watched. You, you didn't think I watched. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very insulted by that. That hurts my feelings, Bondi. I'm not sorry, but I did pick, <laughs> I did pick the Spark to win. And, yeah. you know, the reason is, is that we, we saw a little bit of a dip in the Spark, especially in week two. Sure. But I do think that ever since they've solidified around Gushue as their starting tank, and we, we have seen him sort of play throughout entire matches. There he is. You know, his map win rate is 60%, so he touched on this in that pre-show, whereas those fights down at 40%, and even though they win 1% fewer team fights right now, 47% to 48% with uh -huh. Gushue, he's a bigger playmaker, and I think he's only gonna get better as he integrates into this roster and they learn how to communicate with him. So it's been an effective strategy so far. Right. And the other reason is, as we look at our map records right here, the other reason is, is that when we saw Toronto Defiant go up against Chengdu and we saw that full sky match, they ex they adapted very poorly in game to some of the crazy strategies. Yeah. And Hangzhou is more than capable of running crazy strategies. So I think this is all predicated on Hangzhou doing some unexpected things to throw the Defiant off their game. If they do that, I think they will win. Couldn't agree more. Well, let's welcome our first team in the series. It's none other than the Hongzhou Spark. I think you better bow down. Oh, yeah, I got to check. I got me well, I'm not planning on bowing down before this team quite yet, but <laughs> they are certainly a team to watch in the league. Definitely, I would say, uh, perhaps, if not this stage, then a later stage, definitely playoff bound. Yeah, I think this is a team that's going to just get better as the season goes on. They have a very strong uh, roster of players on an individual basis. They have had some issues with shot calling and honestly, I think nerves on stage, but hopefully those are going to be fading away as the season progresses. True enough. And on the other side of the stage, their opponents give it up for the Toronto Defiant. Roki leading the way as Defiant to take the stage. And this will be a great test for these guys. You know, again, you know, uh, their coach Bishop in one of the videos they put out last week said, we really like New York style. We want to try to bring a little bit of that into our own play and that they want to be the more patient, calculating team. And I think we saw a bit of that in their last match, but they're going to need to have more adaptability, like you said, Monte Cristo, and more resilience against the kind of wacky stuff that Spark's kind of undoubtedly going to throw at them. Yeah, and Ivy and Envy are both at the top of the league, you know, top one or two in Envy's case, top four in Ivy's case, when it comes to D.Va and Zarya damage, respectively. Yeah. So these have been individually very strong players. They've been slowly getting better synergy together, and they've their coaching staff has really done a lot of good research. We saw that against right. Chengdu. It was just when they saw something that was really out of left field, really unexpected, that the problem started arising for the Defiant. Well, it's going to be really impressive for them if they can win two matches this week, because obviously the Hunters throw a lot of strange stuff at you too. But, you know, the difference is that the Hunters, you kind of know what that stuff is going to be, whereas Spark has the ability to be a bit more versatile in terms of really effective stuff that they can throw at you that's outside of the normal 3-3 meta that we see. Yeah, and I do know just from observing a lot of scrims in the preseason that the Spark were running a lot of very weird things in right. their scrims. And so we know they have practiced a lot of this coming into the 2019 Overwatch League season. And uh -huh. I hope they start to pull out some of these pocket strats tonight. I mean, it was really memorable when we were going through and interviewing the teams in the preseason. Every single one said that they really enjoyed playing against Spark and how impressive Spark was in terms of the versatility they brought to it. So. Our map set brought to you by Toyota. It's going to be Nepal, the place we start things off, our control map, and then we'll go on from there to see who takes it. Yeah, it should be good. King's Row as well, the second map, an opportunity for the Spark to run some more unique strategies on their attacks should they choose. And Shrine is an opener that sometimes we get to see some Widowmaker and Farah, but not today, though. Not today. It will be... Reinhardt 3-3. Yeah, everything a bit more standard for these teams as we roll out of the gates here. 
on Shrine, on Nepal, our control map in this four, perhaps five map series between these two teams. Yushui and Yakpung staring each other down as we wait for the point to unlock here. Uh, Envy taking an interesting flanking position, probably just trying to pressure Bebe there on the side. So they can get a nice dash in on us on supports. And Neko, of course, one of the, definitely one of the top players on Toronto Defiant. Good Zenyatta pickup, of course, came over from Boston Uprising. Who has to put that Orb of Harmony on his tank there to stay alive, but the position's good, unfortunately, oh, wow. though. Ivy. Ivy does go down. Ryu with the finishing blow there, and that's gonna make it easy, perhaps, for Hongjo Spark to claim the point first. Yeah, they are. Do. I don't. I didn't see Ivy's positioning right there to see how he actually got eliminated first in that yeah. engagement. And somehow Hongjo Spark carving him off from the rest of the team, and they're gonna be sitting pretty right now. Look at Ivy's old charge, 55%. Godsby has a full Graviton Surge already. So it's going to be a huge ult differential in favor of the Spark. Yeah, you know, sometimes with this 3-3, if all your tanks start dropping simultaneously, it's really hard to keep them all alive because the healing output isn't quite as rapid, right, with this support combo. So sometimes you just lose one, you know? Yeah, I saw Rhea standing there just to get the rockets. He's trying to charge that self-destruct since he's so close right now. Gets a little bit of recharge on the entrance of the Defiant through the choke. We should have it soon. Yeah, he's gonna get it soon, then they're gonna they're gonna pull right now. So rally into getting the self-destruct. And getting aggressive off of that rally now. Godspeed decides to drop the grab on the other side of that little prime thing, I guess. Self-destruct comes down. Ooh, catches Ivy. Once again, he's the first to fall in this fight. And the shatter coming out from Kushwe afterwards will clear things up for Hongjo Spark. It's been all Spark so far here on the ball. You know, I said, Toa, uh, I don't know if you want to run Kushwe if you're the Hangzhou Spark because of the communication issues, but there were no communication issues right there. That was an extremely deliberate push. Yeah. Rhea at 70%, put him in the door. Rockets to get him up to the grab. Rally comes forward. Rhea's at 90%. Push forward, shatter. And then you get the Graviton straight into the self-destruct. That was a beautiful sequence from the Spark. Toronto coming back into this with a lot of ultimates of their own. Unfortunately for them, Ivy has died and hasn't really got much charge here. Now he's got the damage. On uh, that Zarya. So now about the opportunity. There's a grab coming in. Can they finish everybody off? Maybe. Rhea gets one on Envy. That's a good start for Spark. They've got the defensive ultimates too to keep pushing with this. And as Yakpunk falls, it looks like maybe Spark can hold this, but no Toronto turning it right back around again. And even though Gushway gets one at the end. There's another grab though from Godspeed though. And that's the scary thing right here. Kind there it is. Here. Oh, baby. I say that in every sense of the word. Looks like they're going to be able to hold on to it for now. Toronto really looked like they were going to be able to flip it, but no. Spark, talk about resilience. They're going to grab this point. Ah, they're going to get it. I mean, they're not going to get any percent to Defiant. 100 yep. to zero, Spark. All right. That was that was extremely well played by the Spark. Yeah. Uh, they snowballed that point about as well as you could. Everybody on the same page right there. The early death of Ivy turned into a comprehensive Spark win. If you're a good team and you can maintain those snowballs, you can actually rip through a control point like that. That was that was excellently done by the Spark. Yeah. Luckily for Toronto Defiant, that's just one round on their control map. They can come back and try to tie this up. And I think if you're the if you're Toronto Defiant too, you've got a pretty easy thing to target as far as like what you need to improve for the next round. You got to make sure that Ivy either A, you know, improves his positioning a little bit, or B, you know, you're ready to heal that guy because it seems like Spark is kind of tunneling on him a bit more than usual. Yeah, the thing about Ivy, though, is, is as excellent as he is mechanically, he makes questionable decisions at times. All right, so they're scouting right now with the Sombra. They're going to see the oh, okay. Rhyme 3-3, and then they're going to go back and switch to it. So yep. just, a, just a chance there to see what the Defiant were going to run. And if they could play the Sombra in the far, they decide the answer is no. Get it back in plenty of time here before the point unlocks. And yeah, they're going to run in on the low ground, too. That's going to allow them to sit on the point as it unlocks and force the Defiant to come to them. So I kind of like this start by Spark. Kind of taking point, you know? Here you go, Yakpun diving in. They're getting really aggressive. Ooh, Toronto. Just all over Spark and Bezzy can't stay alive. There goes Godsby as well. So I think Spark just kind of got caught off guard there. I mean, they definitely did, but Defiant had a long time to set up a pincer attack on the high ground. Yeah. You know, Spark just ran in, and because you know, Toronto Defiant can move around on the top of the roof of the point, they get an advantage. So Spark do pay for the time that they spent swapping off that composition. Yeah, so now you're on the outside looking in if you're Hungzhou Spark. A little bit of time to build up some ultimates. Only 20% for Defiant so far, but they are going to have a little bit of an ultimate advantage here. 
Yeah, they're gonna try and push the high ground oh, this time. Kushway. Kushway super low. Would have died without that Zarya nice shield. shatter. Yeah, good good uh, use of taking advantage of Kushway going off the edge to try to live here. They got the shatter, that got the, the kill onto Godspeed, and Toronto looking much better here on round number two. Gotta keep Yakpung alive. They can't do it though, but it's enough kills for Defiant to stay in control. Yeah, Yakpung right there, he saw that the Zarya bubble went on to Gushui as well when he got low. So that means there's not really a lot of defensive options for the Shatter coming in. Yeah. Lands the big Shatter, Spark still on the outside here. 50% already built up to the Defiant who have bounced back very nicely yeah. from and Shrine. The Defiant has the, the bigger bang combo, right? They've got the Graviton Surge self-destruct combo online. IDK also very far away from a sound barrier right now. Yeah, very true. Maybe doing what he can damage wise. It's gonna be rallies coming in. Ivy, ooh, walk forward. Thought he was gonna maybe grab here. They're gonna go to the trance. There's a nice kick. Counter shatter. shatter coming out from Gushway. As everyone was in the grab on his team, that's gonna give him another fighting chance to turn this one around. And he throws them back out. Up oh, as he barely lives, gets his shield up in time, but he's still low health. But there goes Yakpung and Stellar. So when the dust clears, as it begins to settle, Spark taking the lead in this fight, and it looks like they're gonna be able to flip the point. 90% though for Defiant. Wow, week to week, Gushue looks so much better integrated into this roster. That was a fantastic counter shatter when they didn't have a sound barrier. And now it's allowed Godsby and IDK to build up their ultimates. And they should be able to hold this for quite some time as Toronto truly depleted after that last fight. Yeah, I mean, even Bebe halfway through to his next transcendence. That puts him ahead of Neko with the uh, Zenyatta ultimate economy there. Good position for Spark. Oh, God, he just decides to go for the grab. Why not? Ooh, push way down, though. They're going to need to win this fast, but unfortunately for them, Defiant has that sound barrier. They could turn this one around. Gushway, you know, he nearly got blown up a couple fights ago, and this time around, Toronto is ready. There's the grab. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. All right, they're going to turn into a few more kills, and that's a clean sweep for Defiant on that one. Easy win after Gushway's isolated. Then they hit the shatter onto Bebe, so he can't trance, and that's just gonna be it. Yeah. So as dominant as round number one was for the Spark, nearly as dominant, 100 to 36, not quite 100 to zero, but it was still a great round for the Defiant, and you know, I think they I think they did adapt. I think they did kind of uh, respond to the issues they had in the first round. I think the problem there was that IDK didn't use the sound barrier fast enough because you knew that they had used their Graviton and their self-destruct on the previous fight. So you can afford to be aggressive with your sound barrier. And if Gushui had that, he wouldn't have died. Yeah. Uh, they probably could have at least taken a fight right there, but... Well, it did kind of strike me too that there were a couple fights earlier where Gushui like nearly died and then just barely got out. So I think Defiant knew if they found just the right moment, they'd be able to blow him up before Spark could respond. And that's eventually what got him the final flip in the end. And Neko has still not changed his spray. Still <laughs> He's using never the Boston one. I, yeah, I don't I don't think there's anything accidental about this, guys. Uh, Yakman going in, it's Valve for the win. It's, oh, no! <laughs> he used his jump to get there, and IDK, really nice move. Oh, he gets one on Roki as well. Wow. IDK. I mean, they're just resetting. Like, what can you do? What a great heads up play by IDK, though. You know a lot of Winstons are going to jump over there. You let him do that, and then you just poop him <laughs> off. That was great. One team has the Lucio there, one team does not. Yep. They know Yakpung's tendencies. They're able to really adjust to it there. But like it. because they reset so quickly, there's not a lot. I mean, no, he knew. He knew. Yakpung blind jumps in. Yep. Farewell. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't get much easier than that. That was just a great, uh, great play. And Roki late to the party. Yep. It's, it's not good for a DJ to be late to the party, though. No, no, it's not the party. <laughs> Some say it cannot start until the DJ is there. I say it starts whenever I get there. <laughs> Rhea, d uh, All right, so it's going to be Defiant just muscling their way into the point and flipping it back for themselves. Yeah, Spark not willing to take that risk right now. Rhea almost already re -mecked, so they have another push. Have to be careful about Ivy's gra Graviton Surge. Godsby still working his way up to his own. Yeah. The sound barrier is to be there alongside the transcendence for the spark so plenty of defensive options they're giving up a lot of percent on this point while they try, try and charge their ults yeah will it be worth it we'll find out ivy fully charged himself he goes in with the grass and they get anything with the combo maybe sound barrier down in time for sparks they've got a chance to push back on this one they're gonna grab themselves and that's gonna let them get a lot of time in terms of just flipping the point too Ooh, idk gets a nice boop on to envy when you see death in that order 
for the uh, Diva that usually beats him just knocked off the edge. There goes Bezzy as well. So, in the end, Toronto Defiant maintaining control on the point for the moment anyway. Yakubon getting low, but he still has that Primal Rage. Can't really get out of there. And he's trying to get in right now, but Godsby yeah, is tough. mega charged yeah. on that point. It has positional advantage, so Yakubon not exactly going to live very long. They get a D-back onto Rhea, though. Godsby going to come and finish off the back on I the mean, other side. To Toronto's credit, they're doing a good job of gaining percentage. They haven't given it up yet. Nope, they may not. They haven't. They're still trying to keep it. Hangzhou Spark has not been able to take it away. They're so close, and now they finally will flip it, I think. Yeah, that was a long time. You get about Eventually. 25, 30 extra percent if wow. you're the Toronto Defiant. Well fought. That's good. It's good for Toronto. Godsby and Ivy now going to be here with matching Graviton surges on the next push to mirror the matching transcendences. They both have differences. Spark has control of the choke. Makes it a lot easier to fight. Yep, that's true. Lucio may be the DJ, but Zenyatta brings the trance in these parties. Might be a little bit low. He's in the grab. No kills out of that one. Ooh. Oh, I thought someone knew he moved off there. Messi, though, not so lucky. As Yakpunk, with a bit of help from his friends, manages to get a kill for Toronto Defiant as they charge back onto the point here. Hongjo Spark pushed away. They've lost their Zenyatta as well. How long can they hold on to this one? Looking like less and less as God's beats down. Whoa, IDK comes in with the double boop, though. I mean, not going to be if enough. If you can get but... out or stay alive, it might nah. be worth. Nope, not going to be. No. So now they're going to be in a tough situation. Point is going to flip here. Spark will be able to get most people back for another engagement. Lucio, Roki has to go back to Taxi, the Brigitte, and the Zarya to the point. It's a lot of ultimates for Hongjo Spark as well. Yeah, a lot of survival ults as well. Rally, Primal Rage, ways to delay this point. Toronto just sending in the self-destruct, just trying to delay Spark from getting started here. Gushwe, oh, we got the knockoff onto Bezzy, or onto Neko, rather. Bezzy gets knocked off by Roki. It's a battle of the primal rages here. Hongjo Spark losing a few people already. Yakpong keeping Toronto in the lead, but here comes Gushwe back again. Who nearly got knocked off yet again, but he's going to be able to stay on this. And I don't know, now Toronto doesn't look like they're going to give this one up. They got a Hammond coming back right now, so yeah, it is going to be low. NB is going to be deep back, so we'll see if they can get through this. There's not a lot of damage right now on the point for Toronto, but they're going to do it. Yep, that's right. So Toronto Defiant coming back after losing that first round. They get two in a row, and they will take Nepal. Yeah, very convincing for the Defiant. Had a rough time, too, after getting picked off. Yakpung at the start of that point, but they rally themselves and make the plays to take the map two to one. Map number two can up. We'll see if Spark can tie things. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, Toronto Defiant, with a lead in the series after a hard-fought win on Nepal. Obviously, Spark with a lot of opportunities, a lot of talent to come back with, but I gotta say, 
and Viant looking really convincing towards the end of that one as far as just being a, a little bit more uh, tight with their engages, right? Spark, you know, they, they survive on the brawl. They were molded by the scrappiness, right? But <laughs> Toronto's trying to play it a bit more clean cut, you know? Yeah, and I, I do think also Bezzy here, we've seen him sort of rotating on that position of the Brigitte with Adora. He's gonna be back in this time, not really sold on the quality of his Brigitte play in particular. So keep an eye on him and whether Adora comes in. But Bezzy will be here for King's Row. That's right, moving towards our hybrid map in this series. I do have to agree, though, that uh, despite the loss on Nepal, Gushue is looking better than ever on this team. And we knew what an enormous talent he was individually coming into this one. And it looks like a lot of the communication woes that they had before have been uh, largely solved. Okay, so quick sonic arrow, so they know where a few of the members of the Spark are. They immediately relocate to the low ground. It will be Sombra from NB. True enough. So no D.Va here. See if they can make some plays with it. Envy already on the flank. Going be trying to deal with this. Ooh, nice oh. check there. <laughs> Dodge the beam. Ah, oh, he's like uh, one of those spies in like one of those movies, dodging through the lasers. Unfortunately, Roki not so, not Roki, so agile. Roki, Roki is not one of those spies, he's dodging the through that, the lasers. Uh, he's the guy that trips the laser, imme <laughs> laser immediately and blows up. And then yeah. uh, gets the guy who was dodging the lasers arrested That's or right. killed. It's definitely like a Mr. Bean scenario there <laughs> or something. Envy, though, 45% of the way to the grab. Long plank now to the upper hallway, so taking the big route towards the back. Yeah. And looks like they will be rotating to Hotel. So there you go, and be on the flank right there, does translocate. Right, coming in quick, Toronto trying to take point to C. So again, Gushui's shield getting really low right now. And he doesn't have an Earth Shatter to defend himself yet. He will after this fire strike, maybe. No, didn't connect with enough people. One tick taken by the Defiant already. As they try to get aggressive on some of the lower health members of Spark, there's the transcendence now. Use Graviton Surge. Yagpunk laid low. Ooh, stays alive barely. Loki come back for a bit of revenge on the IVK. Yagpunk is down though. So maybe with the EMP, Spark has been scattered enough for Toronto to claim the point. They only need that final tick to get the payload moving. And it looks like they're going to be able to grind it out. Gushue. The hack not quite coming through, but Godspeed dies behind him. So that will be finally Toronto taking the point, able to get it in that extensive, extensive brawl. Yeah, and Hangzhou, they decided they weren't going to fight that. Godspeed had a Graviton Surge, did not use it as the fight closed. So they will fight the next one instead. We know Defiant, you use absolutely everything on that push. So Sorry, we should Boston. be able to fight here at the joke. Sorry, Boston. <laughs> No, totally accidental, guys. He, he totally, he's totally meant to change that spray. Just purely, purely a slip of the mind. That, you know, he pat fingered those buttons. He's put sorry, boss, and I'm sure that was an accident. <laughs> Happens to everybody, you know. All right. So next fight getting set up right here on the corner. Excellent place for the spark to fight. NB is behind them currently, charging up again. Graviton's gonna come. Oh, they're in the grab. That's right. Here comes the self-destruct. Sound barrier is out, but it's not enough to save. Stellar and Roki. Ivy had already fallen first. And so Spark will stop the payload for a bit. They do. Nice hold there. Still three ultimates as well for Hangzhou. Notice that they kept the ultimates that are going to be key. Well, actually, Ivy actually used the, the grab at the end of that last fight. Yeah, so. it was not a good fight for uh, for Ivy. Either. Yeah, it's going to be a bonus now for the Spark to have two defensive ultimates. Yep. Be a nice long hold here if they don't get EMP, which they do, but there is, of course, going to be that transcendence. As usual, the EMP hits everybody except for the supports. So maybe able to transcend, does go down right afterwards. Ivy Case does it. Sound Barrier not going to use it, though. They are going to lose the fight instead. And they're so biding their time, gonna give that payload a bit more room to push. All right, the issue there was the idea was fine from the Spark, but Bezzy got picked off so quickly that they couldn't just rush over with the ulting Zenyatta to get the trans healing onto him in time. Something you need to be careful with with Zenyatta. You're, you are literally invulnerable for a while, but you need to make sure when that thing wears off that you're in a place where you're not gonna get blown up immediately. Indeed. Oh, not that that ever happens to me when I play Zenyatta, <laughs> but you know, I see it happen to other people. To so less skilled players. I want to let them know. To less, exactly. To, <laughs> to Overwatch League Cali play, you know. <laughs> I'm the best Zenyatta in the world. Is the best. Here we go. Rallies on both sides. Gushui drops a big shatter. Goes for the charge. Takes Yakpunk right out of it. Maybe with the final blow there. There goes Stellar as well. So Spark winning a big one at the end of B. Yeah, just with a rally and a shatter too. Gushui. Predicts the shield, gonna be dropping right there. 
manages to get the charge onto the Discord and targets, so instant death for Yakpung. And Envy still not at another EMP yet. Huh. Uh, interesting. So didn't get the EMP out of that fight. It's still got it. lurking in the back, but they know that. They're looking for Envy right now. Yeah. It's an Envy hunt. Defiant. Pushing back in again, and he will have the transfer. Ooh, that's a good aggressive graviton from Spark. Let's see if they get anything with the self-destruct. They get Yakpong, the shield removed just before it came down, and that's going to be Toronto regrouping again. And they could do that because they had already chunked out Envy in the back, so they knew where Envy was. Right. You can play with that Garaviton for free because they don't have a D.Va. Oh so why not be aggressive with it? Yeah. Nothing's, that's be nothing stopping you. Literally. Heading back to the high ground right now. Envy is pushed deep into point C. Still attempting to find that angle, but the supports of the Spark have been great at trying to find him in the back line. Shatter comes in, and again, Spark knows they've got the 6v5 with Envy all the way back. They can be super aggro at this. They're gonna try. Transcendence comes in now for Spark. There's the uh, EMP, and maybe Toronto now can turn this one around. They can. So Spark playing themselves a bit. They got aggressive, but they weren't able to win the fight fast enough. Envy got there, EMP'd, and that was it. Yeah, but I like the idea behind that for the Spark, because sure. your other choice is just sit there and get EMP'd. And at the very least, you know, they got some of the ults from the Toronto Defiant. Didn't get. Support ults that they wanted had to commit two of their own, so they are going to have a little bit of a trouble here in C. Yeah. I agree, though, that that wasn't the wrong move. You're, you're going to want to fight that 6v5 while you can, you know? Yeah, Toronto catching wise to it, though. They saw it the yeah. first time. That time they backed off a lot better. Come in again. Godsby needs this grab right now. Maybe a little bit on the low side. High ground for Envy, getting the hacks from on high Godsby. That's right. Grab's coming in for both teams. Oh, Grab is going to survive it. Gushui really low, and Ivy finishes him off. Got that charge, and they weren't able to quite get the healing in out of Gushui. Now the Transcendence comes out. Bebe keeping his team up while they try to finish off four members of Toronto Defiant. Both right outside of commission. There's another EMP. Devastating from yeah. Envy. He's been really good about Very nice. Those. Yeah. If you notice, both times in the last two fights, he's used the EMP after the Transcendence has gone too, which is yep. always a good decision if you can make it. Uh, yeah, didn't have much of a choice in the first fight. That one, no. though, his patience was rewarded, and now the Defiant pushing gear into point C. Spark have a self-destruct, so they can push them off the payload if they want to engage with it. Sure go. Wait, needs to find that big shatter. Bronzo Defiant. Trying to go for the stun on him, didn't land it. Backing off for a moment here. It's going to be the Graviton Surge now for Toronto. Self-Destruct's coming in. Ushway low again. Godsby also in trouble. IDK knocked down. They're going to finish him off, but Yacht Park fell first. There's Gushway in a lot of trouble. He's got people behind him. Zarya Shield comes in just in time. Shatter doesn't need anybody, though. That payload, you got to get there. Oh, that was so close. Godsby nearly let that one go through, but Ivy's coming in with the kills anyway. Sound barrier on the remaining members. That's going to be a bit of a delay, but no, the EMP clears it right off. And Trance is there, though. They couldn't Not get it of off, damage. but that's going to be it. Yep. Not a lot of damage to get the kills for Spark. They needed it. That will be Toronto Defiant finishing their attack run. Bit of time left in the time bank, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's important, too. Having that extra time around 30 seconds will yep. be the number for the Defiant. That's right. Spark on the attack when we come back.
30 seconds in the time bank for Toronto Defiant. They got the job done on their attack with a little bit of time to spare. Now it's up to Hongzhou Spark to see if they can equalize or even do better. And King's Row is one of those maps that we have seen some extremely quick takes on. So Spark, if they got it together on this uh, on this attack, should be able to do it. Yeah, Envy going to stay on to the Sombra right now. Besides that real one attack, they, uh, they're looking pretty good on the Sombra overall. Uh, has been able to be effective with the EMP. And the rest of the team sort of wise to the pushes, too, that Hangzhou is attempting to speed boost into them. So if they disengage, they can still find good EMP okay. opportunities. And there you go. There's something wacky for you. Composition. Love it. This is what I was hoping to see from the Spark today. Quad DPS with the Mercy on the healing. Hammond is a Sonic Arrow from Bebe. Trying to set things up here. A little bit of time on the point already from Gushway. So double sniper is a very classic strategy here on yeah. King's Row attack because of the long sight lines and the crossfire you can set up. But they've actually like added to it by having the Fara and the Soldier 76 here as well. Right, Soldier puts down a lot of covering fire, can keep himself healed up, heal some teammates once in a while too. So just a lot of damage coming from a lot of different directions right now. And this 3-3, you know, overall is fairly low healing if the ultimates aren't included. Dogpong a little bit low, as he tries to escape here, and he can't. Ivy hits him with the right click. So one DPS down now. Yeah, you can't let that Zarya through a door right there. That's no. going to be an oversight on the part of the Hangzhou Spark. You've got to make sure you get those eliminations. There you go. Envy being down yeah. will allow them to retake the point slowly here as Hammond returns. Yeah, it generally isn't super quick. But it's something where you can just kind of grind through the 3-3. Three, three. Yachpunk does get Rhea, though. With a fire strike? I was going to say, Rhea must have been chasing him. I think he must have gotten low and trying to finish him off. As he down as well, Ivy gets another kill here. And there's a barrage. All right, two from Godsby. It's taken off by Stellar. I don't know if that's enough for Hongjo. I don't think it is. I mean, the problem with this composition is that you can't actually have presence on the point, right? Yeah. Because you're just trying to zone people out. So the point capture is going to be a slow process, much slower than Hangzhou would have wanted. So you get kills because you need those overwhelming numbers. Now MB comes back in with the EMP. Bebe out of commission. And Rhea in trouble too here. On that Soldier 76 gets chased down by Stellar as well. So. This is not working for Hongzhou Spark. If you're going to make a change, it needs to be now. Uh, might be, it might even be too late. No, already. I think they're they're not going to make the change, Doa, because Roki's not going to be here for the start of this next engagement. So there's an opportunity. He's back now. Oh! Whoa, busy. <laughs> That's the kind of shots they were looking for earlier. Uh, now you can do it. Yeah. And be taken out by the Helix Rocket from Rhea, too. So things finally starting to fire here for Hongzhou Spark. There's a minefield just zoning out the rest of the members. That should be point A. Yeah. Took them a while, but they got the job done. But here's the problem, Noah, is that you didn't take it fast enough. Yep. Now you don't have a lot of time on the clock. You're going to get some exit kills, but all Toronto Ooh. Defiant had to use was going to be that EMP for the fight, right? They're going to be coming up on five volts soon. EMP doesn't take that long to charge. So it's going to be a rough one here or the Hangzhou Spark as they head through the streets phase. My ultimate is charging. Yeah, Toronto well equipped to get this defense going. Spark's sticking with it though. It's been a long time since we've seen a, a successful attack by them from Soldier Player. Might be fun. Oh, that grab! No, oh, didn't really get anybody. Rhea taken out, but not because of the Ivy's ultimate. Yagpunk down, Bebe finds one. Looks like Roki's in a lot of trouble. He's going to spend a lot of time in that cafe because he's dead. Oh, boy. And they're going to start to come in right now. Yep. They're awfully close to Ivy right there, but they need to get some more eliminations. And they're not going to get an Ivy again with a massive kill. Oh, well, Toronto just kind of getting the kill slowly but surely here. And the best part for them is that they've only had to use that grab. Hello. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is disastrous. Like, they have to switch now. You can see the barrage is being used in the yeah. corridor. Goodbye, ult economy. Yeah, goodbye, ult economy. And this is the trick, right? You don't get it fast enough. You reset your own ult economy. Toronto now can just sort of use theirs one by one by one. So it will be very difficult for Hangzhou to push through point B. Yeah, so if you're smart right now, okay, first you get EMP, then you lose Gushui, things aren't great, but how can you draw more ultimates out of them? That's the question. You're not you going to get any more in this fight, that's for sure. <laughs> you can't. I mean, they know, they, they know you have nothing, yeah. right? So there's no need to invest 
anything more. And just go ahead and hack the baby demon. Well, they got some charge out of it, I guess. That's yeah. a slight bonus. They put the Zarya shield on him. Get uh, God's B a little bit of charge on the Zarya. You know, I'm sure Diva doesn't appreciate that as much as I <laughs> Am I only charge farm to you? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. Yeah, and you are actually at this point. So here we go, out the gates again. Defiant not going to be spawn camping them, even though they definitely could right now. It's a choice that they could make. Yakpung, he wants oh, the boy. drop down. He wants them to drop down because oh. they see him. Oh, nope, that's right. He was hoping they would uh, drop down to get shattered from behind. Didn't end up working out. Get stunned! Ooh, went below 100 health there, but it's Benzi, the one who falls first in that fight on the spark side. Uh oh. Envy down as well. Doesn't have the EMP anyway, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. They did break through Gushe's barrier as well. I mean, it might be a big deal because Envy going down means they may have to commit more ults into this fight because they will be short-handed by a player. I mean, you can just let them get some, some distance with the payload here. Sure. I mean, there's only 60 seconds left. Spark yeah. are coming up on their first batch of ultimates. Defiant have really only used EMP and Rally. I think this, I mean, is this, has, right been, this has been excellent discipline from the Defiant. Yeah. This is them playing exactly like they said they want to play. Looking good. Very safe, very measured. There's a grab. Counter grab comes in. Spark. And anything? Nope. All right, transcendences. Come out. There's a rally. There's the EMP from Ali. Oh, and that's a big shatter on the back of that one. EMP into Earth Shatter, and that's a clean team fight win for Toronto Defiant. Less than 30 seconds remain for Spark. And now they're just going to try and get him as they come into spawn. Make idea. sure Rhea gets D Max. Oh, that's rough. Uh, it's very, very rough indeed. They don't have time to wait around for this one. The Spark have to move. Yeah, readjust respawning now. But he's gonna have to really rush. They need to get somebody get there. They gotta get someone to the payload. Okay. I think they will. Yeah, IDK, IDK got there. Ooh, he got there, but he paid for it with his life. And now, without that sound barrier, I don't know how Spark is going to take this when they lose Gushway. Sound barrier for Toronto to find. It's insult to injury. But look at that, Rhea pushing the payload. Doesn't matter, right, though. No. On, yeah. You aren't that sneaky. We've talked a lot about the uh, the good old uh, C9s this week, but we're not going to see one there. It's just going to be Toronto Defiant going up 2-0 in this series instead. And I know you guys don't like it, and the crowd boos when you switch compositions, but that is textbook what happens. Yep. If you don't take A quickly, you get a hard reset on your ult economy. It is so difficult to get back into the game. That's right. We will be back with halftime right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.
The Toronto Defiant are trying to secure a spot in the Stage 1 playoffs, and they're only one map away from doing just that. Currently, it's 2-0 over the Spark at the half. Welcome back, Blizzard Arena. Make some noise. You still with me? Yes! Awesome day of action. As always here in the Blizzard Arena, the games have been tight all day long, but your score currently is 2-0. But, Bren, we were just talking backstage. This should be a 1-1 set. It really should, yes. Yeah. Statistically, we were taking a look at it. It makes no sense at all, but Toronto are actually doing a lot worse in terms of the stats for the first map in particular. Uh, but in the end, they managed to clinch it out anyway. So I, hopefully I'll be able to explain how that happened. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the highlights from this one as it goes on. But keep your eyes on the Lucio from the Spark. Five environmental eliminations on Nepal. Just to put that in perspective, that's the total that Gladiators got across four maps in their previous match. Yep, it absolutely is. So it's a crazy number here. But part of the reason why I think that Toronto were able to take this, despite having the worst statistics compared to the Hangzhou Spark, is because that they are a lot cleaner in terms of winning out team fights. Just overwhelmingly with their ult combos. That's one of the biggest things I've noticed, whereas Hongzhou like to take these long drawn out fights where the stats are often going to be in their favor. But when it comes to actually executing these team fights, as you can see here, they are on the ball and it, they're really excelling against the Hongzhou Spark that are struggling with communication. So of course we saw Yakpung for the Toronto Defiant, but earlier on the pre-show, you said you wanted to see Gushui back in the lineup for the Spark. What have you seen from him so far? Well, I think he did what I expected him to do, which is uh, a little bit more on the aggressive side of things. And I do think that actually played into uh, Defiant's favor here, because Defiant have been doing really, really well at uh, playing more passive. They've been more uh, calculating the situation. Uh, generally, they were a lot more uh, in the back and just kind of waited for the Spark to engage, which uh, won them a lot of team fights. They uh, had a, a better better time with their old combos, I would say. There were a lot of great EMPs, uh, initiations from Envy, uh, specifically here on King's Row. It's a nice 15-man really, streak. Yeah, which which really won them the fights. I completely so. agree with you, Zoe. Yeah, I, I think Envy was honestly key for Toronto Defiant and taking this. Uh, the one thing you need to do when the enemy team has a Sombra is you need to play more aggressive into them. You need to try and deny the Sombra from getting off a lot of hacks and whatnot. They struggled to do that. Envy was kind of just walking all over them. You can see here, five deaths to his name, and the amount of hacks he was getting per EMP, great efficiency across the board. And it's just Toronto, they've got what it takes to really clean up off the back of that. So do you want to see more Sombra from Toronto in the second half? Always, always. But uh, yeah, what I really want to see in the second half is Spark cleaning it up a little bit. Uh, I do feel like they were a little bit too scrappy. They didn't make the necessary switches quick enough, which was really my main bother. Uh, it took them way too long to take point A. They didn't switch off of their DPS combo and then they just kind of ran out of time since they basically killed their old economy uh rolling into yep. b so uh, yeah i hope for quicker switches well brian we know that toronto is working their way towards the playoffs trying to lock it up here let's talk about the spark though how do they bring this back and force a game five so they have a real issue right now where they've got gushui who's chinese and the rest of the team is korean so they're having issues with communication and that is showing is quite evident actually in the games that we've seen uh just now between these two teams if Toronto keep playing these somber compositions and playing hard into them, it, it's going to be very difficult for them to try and work around it. Because again, like I said, the communication is off. You need to be quick with the comms to really stay on top of Envy when he's playing the Sombra. So realistically, I, I don't want to say it, but it feels like maybe Nose might coming back in might be an option that for might them. Be the even move. though even though Gushui is a better main tank, I feel like the communication is the one thing that's letting them down. So that might be an option for them. But they, like Zoe said as well, they just need to play cleaner and tighter across the board. I like that call. All right, we'll see how this one plays out. Blizzard Arena, are you ready for some more video games? Yes! Me too. We got plenty more Overwatch. It's the Overwatch League, and we'll be right back. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back, guys. Halftime has come and gone, and Toronto Defiant have put themselves one map away from winning this series against the Hongzhou Spark. The Spark certainly seeming to uh, struggle quite a bit with uh, Envy Sombra more than anything on King's Row. Yeah, they had a temporary fix, which was to run at them, but then Toronto Defiant said, Almost worked. What if we run away Close. and then EMP, and it works? <laughs> what do you know? And that's there a, it is. And that's Goats in a nutshell. And that is the adaptation <laughs> that sets the bad Goats team away from the good Goats team. Yeah, you know, good Goats, is an, it's an ebb and flow, right? Of sure. engaging and disengaging, tracking ult economy. From an analysis perspective, it's actually quite interesting. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing with this meta, is that there's a lot of really neat, subtle stuff that goes on. It's just sometimes it's a little bit tougher to see that in the big sort of explosion of color that happens every uh, team fight. Grab, I'm still instructed and all that. I'm still enjoying it for the, the amount of time that we get to enjoy you know, it. Here's the facts. Like, I like 3-3 I like three, three as a comp. I think it's cool. It'll be neat when we have more than 3-3 three, three on more maps. And it's going to happen. For sure. But, uh, you know. So it'll be cool when it's more of a, hey, that's a good strategy for this particular situation, rather than, hey, that's a good strategy for pretty much every particular situation. Wow. I, too, go. remember dive. That's Catching right. Tracer dive. Remember <laughs> Farm, remember. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> on to Volskaya Industries. Hongzhou Spark on the defense. Toronto Defiant trying to set themselves a good time as they try to win this map and win the series. Nothing out of the ordinary for these two teams. Going with that 3-3 with the Reinhardt. Ooh, Toronto Defiant turning around though, designed to re reverse rotate. Re reverse rotating. That's right. That's what they're doing right now, trying to get in behind Gushue. Couldn't quite knock him into their team. Yeah, so just looking for an angle right here with both teams playing the Reinhardt 3 3. It is a little bit more difficult for Toronto to approach the point. Yep, sure enough. Oh, Yakpunk gets stunned. He's, he's in stunned. trouble and he's out. That was a great shield bash coming in from Bezzi. And He's going to treat himself with a couple final blows onto Evie and Stellar, too. Yeah, Easy. gets onto the flank, and then there's the Discord Orb target called Hangzhou Spark win the first battle and start their ult economy rolling. Messi actually already with a rally, so yeah. super fast ult for him. That's a strong air conditioning unit on top of that building, man. Gushway's run into that several times with this charge. Do you think not it's an, an air conditioning unit? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Just a you, question. Got, you got me there. I can't. Just a question. No response to that. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going a little bit low. Envy actually had to back off there. Toronto Defiant, ooh, they're kind of split up between the two rooms. Envy jets in there to try to get back to his team. Barely makes it, but that's a lot of health that needs healing before the Toronto Defiant can really get onto the point. Yeah, Yakpung nearly dying there to another combo from the Shield Bash straight into the Discord Orb. Yakpung again low. They're focusing Yakpung very hard now. Wow, and that pulls out the Transcendence from Neko. That is not an ult you want to use in that situation because now on board with Godsby, you know he's waiting to use that grab. He's not even going to need it, though. There goes Yakpung. Shui down too, but with the grab coming in, now Toronto has, oh. no, has nothing to really stop this. Yeah, it's an easy one. Maria <laughs> gets a DMAC on Envy to boot, and that's what happens when you don't have the Trance, you don't have the Reinhardt shield. Bye. Yeah, a lot, lot used there, though. Bessie coming up on another rally. You'll notice, though, that Hangzhou have changed their play style. Coaches have talked to them in intermission. They're playing defensively now, and they're targeting Yakpung aggressively. So like they're it. trying to put Bezzi on the flank so that he can get the stun, force Yakpung low. However, Defiant coming into this next fight, quite a few ultimates. Spark again, conserving their support ults. They may be able to ride this one out. They're going to have all three. Bezzi really close to his rally, too, so. Toronto's gonna have to find a way to work through this. Sorry, shield down. Oh, it got eaten! Ivy's grab gobbled up by Rhea's defense matrix. And now Shatter comes in. That's gonna be sound barriers on both sides. As he down, so Toronto Defiant with a good start here. It's gonna be Bebe trying to keep people up with that transcendence, but Rhea's already been deep back. That ultimate was a little bit late on the Hongjo side. Thought he maybe had more time after Soundberry was out, but it looks like it's going to be Defiant taking A here. Uh, this is this time the Defiant for Wise. Bezzy was trying to play aggressively, too far forward again. This time gets caught out and eliminated, and that combined with the Dean back from Rhea means Toronto Defiant going to cap the point. But yeah. Hangzhou, by using their own Transcendence, did get the Trance out of Defiant. So snowball potential here really low because of the Rally Shatter and the Graviton Surge generated by the Spark. Maybe with a, a good combo from Ivy and Envy. Possible. Yeah, it is possible. That is something that they could make work for them. 
considering there isn't a sound barrier. So no overshield to protect against the large amount of self-destruct burst damage. Yeah, if the execution is tight, they uh, could potentially get some time in on point B. See, Ivy down to half health. Has to pop that shield early. Rhea in trouble. Has to back away. Crab got eaten though. Rhea turned around. Wow, Ivy thought he had a chance because Rhea was moving away from the point, but the last second Rhea turns, does a 180, sticks on the defense matrix. That was great. Meanwhile, Spark throws in their own grab. Chushra gets two with the charge, and that's going to be Spark turning that around. Man, play of the map. Easy for Rhea right there. That was great. Yeah, did. Did flip around and pick that one up, but Ivy, that was a risky grab at that range when the D.Va's on your flank. So, you know, the D.Va defense matrix can just sort of go perpendicular, and that's the proper orientation for a D.Va. It's proper sure. positioning when you want to be able to deny those Graviton surges because it means you can't throw them in willy-nilly at range. You have to get very close, throw them into a wall, choose something else. Well, it covers a long area, too, and yeah. I think that's what Ivy kind of underestimated because it, it did, to his credit, it did look like Ryu was pretty far away, but just turned around, was barely in range. Pretty sick. Now Defiant trying to come back in again. Still a few ultimates to use, but Spark easily equal in that category. Yangpung in trouble, he blocks the Shatter. Now Neko pops that Transcendence. Ooh, the Kai Shatter from Yangpung, so good. And Toronto Defiant picking up a few kills before the Sound Barrier comes in for IDK. That's a Sound Barrier that's not gonna get them a whole lot. And Toronto Defiant going to be able to pick up some time here before the respawns start coming in. Yeah, they have Trance, though, so they're going to be able to survive on the point for a little bit longer. And they can delay a bit. Transcendence covering the uh, re-engage from Spark here, but there goes Rhea's mech. Now they do have a rally, they do have a grab. All right, good sound barrier for Proki now as the grab comes in from the Spark side of things. Bezzy down to the self-destruct from Envy, and there goes Godsby. Knocked away with the whip shot, so it looks like it will be Defiant. Cleaning this up over time. Gushui coming in. Doesn't have a lot of healing with just that Zenyatta's Harmony Orb. That's a problem. Not even going to be able to get there. Toronto Defiant setting a pretty solid time here on Volskaya. Yeah. That, I mean, it wasn't great for Defiant, but it was a really you know decent time for them. Certainly something they can work with. We'll see if the Spark are going to try something weird on their own attack. I would almost be sure of it. So you don't want to miss it. We'll be back right after this. Skaya Industries, where the weather is cold, but the action is red hot. And they don't have air conditioners on they, their building. Hey, you know what? If you <laughs> seal that building, if you close the door, it might get kind of toasty in there. You never know, all right? <laughs> there are I, no air conditioned bikers. I come from the frigid north. There is air conditioning in Wisconsin and Minnesota, all right? So it's possible. So I'm saying. All right, well, nothing wacky here from the Spark. I guess, you know, with only two minutes and 13 seconds, it isn't the world's fastest Full sky of time. Sure enough. It's a pretty, pretty moderate one here for, put up by the Defiant. You can see also, oh, they're, they're changing. Sure. Okay. So while they do that, the big thing with All this right. map right here is that if Toronto Defiant win this map, they'll win this series. And by doing that, they will lock in a spot in the stage playoffs. So this is a big map for Toronto here. They're opting into a Winston 3-3 mirror. Normally, we would see 
the Reinhardt here, so you have more of a snowball, but they're not making that decision. Gushue really wanting to play Winston versus Winston from with Yakpung. That is huh. that is weird. All right, well, I mean, he certainly know a little bit more for his Winston than his Reinhardt, so uh, perhaps a bit of a comfort pick here. Spark. Oh, stopped! Mario would be proud of that one. Maybe it was a Goomba in that situation, but Yakpung in trouble. They're trying to keep him alive here. Gosby gets a kill to Ivy as well, and Spark responding with a few kills of their own, so it's looking okay for Spark for the moment, though Rhea does get demacked. Toronto is still a few people on the point here. I mean, they've got very low healing right now. They need to back up. They have a rally for this next engagement, so we'll be a six sure. versus four temporarily. Oh, Neko! Oh, IDK. Clutch, clutch elimination. That's going to let the rest of Tobian get back to the point. Now, Neko, you know, he's come up so big. Neko has actually died only three times so far in all three maps. He has That's not amazing. died on Volskaya yet, and he died once in the last map on King's Row and twice on Nepal, so he is quietly having a very good day. Uh, he and Envy are doing really, really well in this match. Here's the self-destruct. Engage, and it catches IDK. How does that happen? Rhea gets demacked as well, and Neko just putting a boot to the face of Rhea, and that's going to send Spark packing. Toronto Defiant looking really good on the defense so far. Yes, they are, and... Uh, you know, the least the Spark are doing is saving up some of these ultimates, but the Defiant are getting such excellent value out of their ults, and it just seems to be getting better and better. Yeah. The longer this series goes on, they look very disciplined when it comes to the ult economy, and they're going to try and jump back right in now with Gushui. Both Winstons have Primal Rage available to them. Yeah, two minutes remaining now for Spark, a little bit less, 140 actually on the clock right now. They've got six ultimates, it's now or never. Got to get point A taken. They're going in for the grab, but it's getting eaten by Envy. He was ready for Godspeed's Graviton Surge. And now Toronto throws their own grab in there. Transcendence comes out. Self to start though for Spark. Not finding any kills. It's going to be Primal Rage now for Yakpung. Stellar down. Maybe Spark can turn this one around. Despite that bad start, losing the grab. It's going to be close. And they're doing it. Yakpung down. So Hongjo Spark, despite a rough start to that fight, Managed to win it, and it looks like they're going to take point A. Still three minutes, gobbled up the clock, the clock by the Defiant. Now they're going to switch to the Reinhardt. What still yeah. gets me, though, is why Hangzhou wanted to play the Winston here on A. Because the idea is Defiant has to play the Winston because they know Hangzhou could try and hit them with a three or four TPS composition. You might need to reposition quickly. True. But if you just run the Reinhardt, you just walk onto the point, and they have to re-engage you. Makes it very difficult to push the Reinhardt off the point. We almost never see teams scout and then swap to Winston. Now, Hongzhou did have to use up nearly all their ultimates here. They've got another 420 on the clock here, but they've had to use a lot to get there. So the momentum, a little bit less than usual. Bezzy, so Chad. So Bezzy, yeah, not going to make it out of there. And Godsby, yeah, now you just save the grab. Yep. Just go ahead and lose the fight. Back away. There goes Gushui, and uh, so they're going to live to fight another day. I mean, I'm impressed with how fast the Defiant are adapting their in-game tactics. Oh, baby. You know, our King's Row, they got fooled once by having Envy pushed way out, and yeah. they lose a fight. But this time around, you know, we also saw Bezzy trying to be more aggressive with his shield bash plays onto Yakpung, but they lose Yakpung once, and then all of a sudden, now they're targeting Bezzy. The Defiant are targeting Bezzy very actively, knowing that he wants to make these aggressive plays. Yeah, true enough. On board with Brokey now. Spark, taking their time to get back to the point. Looks like they're going to go ahead and take the moving platform, and Loki setting himself up for perhaps a poop. Yeah, knows what they're trying to do at oh, yeah. the moment. Spark really taking a while. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, now everybody's on board. All right, train's moving out. Rhea comes in to try to displace uh, Roki. There's a poop. Did he get anybody? Certainly displaced a couple. Yeah, they're still going to be on the high ground, though. They yeah, will looks have an like option be okay. to wrap around the flank here. They drop down to the low ground, actually, as they come up the stairs. Trying to use some of that angle to uh, avoid some of the fire from Toronto Defiant. He's trying to use the corner actively. Rally time. And beyond the top, just free firing going in. But that self destruct and they get rid of the Ryan shield. There's the charge. They've done it. That's a 4K. Make it a 5K as Rhea's mech is down as well. And man, that charge from Yakpung set it up. And that's a good one. Yeah, man, you can dance. You, you can, can dance if you want to, <laughs> because you've left Spark far behind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow, that was a great combo, and Spark used so much time.
to wait for that platform and then just get absolutely wiped. Wow. IDK had no sound barrier to counteract that. A couple of Yakpung's charge, easy setup. That's a lot of time taken off the clock, too, for Spark. Here we and go try again. It again. All right. Didn't get tired of it the first time. It's, so. a, it's like a clown car of a platform. I can't believe they <laughs> fit so many people on there and they're gonna knock a couple off, okay. On the high ground, that's the attack again. I mean, you know exactly what they're doing. But the combo not there for Toronto this time around. They're going back through the health pack room. Okay. That go down, that's a big pick for Rhea. Spark with a chance at a 65. And again, aggressive Yakpun tries to respond, or respond with a shatter, but Stellar already down. Spark have found themselves a fight that they can win. They found themselves a chance to take point B here. They just have to handle these respawns cleanly. Uh, starting to push forward right now. So a minute and a half remaining. So Deviant attempt to be holding this. Yep. All right, there's the grab. As you can see, Toronto just trying to delay as long as they possibly can. Neko's trying to keep people up with the Transcendence as he comes back in. And he did get the kill under Rhea. During that self-destruct, Tintix taken already. Now the grab for Toronto. It's going to cause Bebe to pop his own Transcendence. Yakpung swinging through there. He's going to have the Shatter very soon. Kushwe gets a kill into Stellar. The charge from Yakpung. Not finding anything. Kushwe just walking in there. Oh, he's in the corner. It's brutal. There goes Yakpong and Ivy. A lot of damage, but not a lot of HP remaining. And I think that's going to be about it. Spark should be able to finish this one off. Eventually. Bye, Roki. Bye, Stellar. Good night, Moon. And that's it. Spark managed to tie things up here on Bull Sky Industries. A lot less time, though. Good stall at the end by the Defiant. So they will have an advantage going into Tide Bank. Yeah, that is something. One minute for Spark. And a break before extra innings. So as we take a look at the time banks here, we see that Toronto Defiant has a lot more banked up than the Hongzhou Spark do. 2.23 on the clock, just a minute for Spark. And remember, Toronto Defiant, if they win this map, and if they win this series in general, they will lock up a spot in the stage playoffs. Uh, will be well-deserved, too, from them, looking yep. better map to map to map. Sort of a rough debut for this team, but they have coalesced quickly they have no Moira necessary. The coalescence is there naturally. It's inside them, though. That's right. It was in their hearts the entire time. All right, so again, nothing too crazy, just the Winston. Yep. Really want to go for this Winston play. That's where they're feeling confident. Not oh, sure I agree, Rhea. Doa, and Rhea's just oh, going to get the impact. He, he went up there to try to help out Gushue, got stuck, got de and that's a disaster for Spark. They're going to be down to just 30 seconds remaining, less than that even if another pick comes through here. Way. You better get back to spawn, buddy. There we go. All right, he's safe. Seconds uh, save the Zarya charge. That's about yep. the only positive there for the Hangzhou Spark. Spark needs a massive team fight. Otherwise, they're going to put Toronto in a situation where they only need a tick to take the map in the series. Here we go. Spark coming in aggressively. They drop the shield up on top here. Toronto Defiant dropping back to the point. They don't want to give up any time at all to the Spark. Slow push in right now, Yakpo. The later bubble. That's right. The Zarya. And a uh, real little bit of trouble. That's going to be Bebe with the Transcendence. Just in time as they get aggressive. Stellar, they got to keep alive. Grab comes in, though, on the Toronto side. Guts be down. That is it. Spark cannot do it. They can't get onto the point. They can't get anything done. And Toronto Defiant is going to be in an amazing spot to take this and they clinch. the series. I mean, they clinch because that's they, true. That's, that's a the draw. Series. It's minimum a draw right now. So congrats, Toronto fans. The Defiant yep. are in the playoffs. The worst result for Toronto on this map is a draw. They've won the series with two maps already. And that means, like you said, Monte Cristo, they are going to the stage one playoffs. So it's a victory lap from here on out for Toronto Defiant. You can tell they know it. Roki looking pretty happy there. That's a good way to end 
your first stage, obviously, so. as an expansion team coming in and making it into that top eight, securing your spot. Yeah. And you want you look at this Toronto Defiant team, and, and a lot of other teams have these like big, flashy playmaking stars and all that. And Toronto has their moments, but what they bring more than anything is just very, very good, solid Overwatch. They know this meta inside and out, and they can execute on it really, really well. Yeah, I think sometimes they do slip up. Like we have seen some mistakes, but they do their teamwork gets better week by week. Yeah, they they aren't NYXL, but they're close. They're getting there. They're, I wouldn't say they're close. They're getting there. They're, fa they're fairly close. slowly. That's like <laughs> slowly. Seventy percent <laughs> towards there, maybe. Yes, yeah, so they get a grade of C minus at being NYXL. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's like a A in public school. I don't. Is it? I have no idea. It's been a while. Spark on the defense now, of course. This map of the worst for Toronto is going to be a draw, but they'd love to get that win. Make it easier for them coming out with a Winston right now into the Reinhardt. That, this is a, it's an even bolder play from the Toronto Defiance. Hey, like I said, it's, it's a victory lap for them from now on here. Making it this really difficult on themselves. Trying to run that Winston and actually get onto the point is super difficult. It's going to go sky high for a second. They've got Spark pushed back into the health pack, which is generally the place you retreat to. Yeah, but Yakpong oh, is... Oh, this... Whoa, to the moon! He's going home! <laughs> Go home, Winston. <laughs> yeah, um, they need to switch off this Winston. This is this is really just a terrible idea on attack yeah. because you can't contest the point effectively because you're so gated around your cooldowns for your jump. And if you get stunned like that because the... The Brigitte can simply walk into your bubble and stun you. Discord right. Orb, you just die immediately. Pretty much. You go home to the moon. And so, <laughs> Yuckpunk. He's, he's gone now. He's gone now. He went back to the moon. Yep. Winston's gone. He's just having a grand old time. Back home. Not dead at all. Envy. That mech is dead. Maybe finding one there. So, Toronto going to find it. Much tougher to push. But just that mini diva. You can just jump on that any time if you're Spark, really. Yeah, there goes Ivy. Okay. Well, I, I mean, Ivy is only 65% of the way to the grab. This yeah, Winston play rough. that is inexplicable from the Defiant, they could have scouted that and swapped immediately. Instead, they have decided that they were going to try and style on them a little bit. Yeah. But it has not been effective to this point in time. And now they're at one push here. Well. You don't drive real hard on the victory lap, Monty. <laughs> you don't, that's true. No. Definitely not pedal to the metal. You're already a winner. Godsby with the grab here. Good set up another team fight win for Spark. They've got a ton of ultimates available way ahead of Toronto in the alt economy. Yes, you only have 10 seconds to poke before you have to get on that point. Yeah, gotta do it. Here we go. Get the rally. Oh, goodbye, Ivy, again. Yeah, well, it's going to be a 6v5 in favor of Spark. Self-destruct comes in. They got the south area. The protective Priya drops his. Now there goes Bezzy. Yakpunk down after he charged Bezzy to death. So far, not so good for Toronto Defiant here on this particular push. And it looks like Spark are going to be able to at least force the tie. And they are, Doha, and that might be a problem later on for the Defiant. This will be a draw. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we keep saying it, every map matters. And if I'm if I'm Coach Bishop and I'm watching that one, I am really unhappy it's like, with that decision. You gotta, at the end of the day, it's like, guys, seeding is still a thing. Just because <laughs> you're in the playoffs doesn't mean you don't care what part of the playoffs you yeah, get in. Yeah, which half of the bracket you're in it could be yeah. very impactful. Exactly. Well, we'll see if they clean it up a bit on map four when we come back. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Toronto Defiant locking up this series and locking up a spot for them in the stage one playoffs as well. But like we were talking about at the end of that map, Monty, uh, seeding does matter. They still want to get as many map wins as they can because you don't want to face the strongest person in the playoffs immediately. So, and that was that was eh. truly a silly way to play that last point from the Defiant. A little bit. I I don't know what the thought process there was. I, I think that there was already some weird like Winston versus Winston 3-3 mirror that was going on from the Spark. So my anticipation is that the Defiant sort of wanted to show them how it's done, but <laughs> show them how it's done. They did not. They played themselves, <laughs> they say. We're going to Rialto for our final map in this series. Of course, Rialto, the escort map. And so we'll see if maybe Toronto tighten things up again. You know, another map win in their pocket here before the end of the series. Honestly, I like, guess the Campiello Vesciello. Yeah, you're Italian. I could excellent. not <laughs> speak Italian. Oh, and the Pointe de Lono. Oh, God. Stop. Anyway. Oh, and the Campo <laughs> oh. Monteverde. <laughs> Ah, so, uh, yes. So My favorite places. One of the things about this map, or this match that's been really cool, is that, in a way, it has been a primer on 3-3. We saw yeah. why not many teams choose to play quad DPS into 3-3. We've seen what happens when you try and attack a Reinhardt 3-3 with a Winston 3-3. So <laughs> this is this is really uh, demonstrative. Thank you, Taras and Defiant. That's a, it's a good 3-3 uh, study uh, match if you want to learn it's, a bit it's about It's a clinic. Things. It's a 3-3 it's a three -three clinic from right. the Toronto Defiant. That's right. We study the various ailments and healthy bodies That's right. of the GOAT's medal. Truly, the Toronto Defiant, the veterinarians providing the GOAT clinic. That's right. Goat Clinic was named by Punk Band in high school. It's, uh, what a coincidence there. It's, I can't believe that happened. Hungjo Spark on the low ground here. Defiant coming down to try to get this payload moving a bit more. Nickel's still up there, though. It's not going to give any of that high ground away if you can avoid it. Fighting it out, baby. They're going to try to charge in on this. I don't know. Going through the building. Oh. The Diva went in pretty deep. Yeah, Rhea gets d mag as he falls as well. Looked like Rio went to try to protect Bebe as they tried to charge onto him, and Defiant was ready for that. Yeah, pin the back there looked like yep. a little bit hard to tell in the swirl of beautiful red. Well, kills on both sides, actually, but it is going to be Spark getting, or uh, rather Defiant, getting to push the pail at the end. They're taking Reinhardt's hammer with them. Yes, they are. Not giving it back. Oh, oh it's gone. Whoa. So well, it's like it's Golder or something like that. It just goes right back to Reinhardt's hammer. It's like Thor. It is like Thor. Oh, before his hammer got wrecked anyway, you know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, did get wrecked in the mythology, but that's fine. Well, you know, we're talking about the MCU here. <laughs> ah, yes. The worst version <laughs> of mythology. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. <laughs> Bale is nearly to the end of point A already for Toronto Defiant. Maybe looking for a good place to put that grab, perhaps. Right there. I don't think Katria again. self struck thrown in by both teams. Oh! Can we, count? we get caught? Nice boot from Roki, actually. Because he was standing there with the shield, Roki yeah. moved him to get the kill with the self-destruct. That was a great play by Roki. Yeah, Roki's had a lot of heads-up plays on this Lucio today. Kushway coming back with a couple kills himself, though, before going down. Taking a dip in the canal. And it's still going to be Toronto on top when the fight ends. Well, I mean, it's been all defiant so far on this map. Spark looking a little broken at this point in time. So yeah. struggling here to get into an advantage with their ult economy. Fortunately for them, they might have an opportunity here to really take a defense on the best corner, I think, in any Overwatch League map, which is this corner on the high ground on Rialto. It is so right. hard to break. Near the Titro del Canto Opera. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I it's know your, it it's well. Your, it's your favorite opera. Right. <laughs> it's right up there. Oh, they get do the underpass. Now you got to break the corner. It's going to be the grab. They're going for it. They're not wasting any time here. And goodbye, Bezzy. Eddie eats IDK's uh, grab. Grab, yeah. Huh, I don't know why. I don't know why. No, sometimes, gotta, sometimes, huh, interesting. Noah, sometimes when, it, when the diva <laughs> eats a grab, it can appear as sound uh -huh. barrier or Godspeed became Lucio's ultimate. Or trance. Sometimes there, that yeah. happens too. Sometimes it eats self destruct. That was just Godspeed's but... expression when his grab got eaten. That's, that's what that was. <laughs> Very accurate representation. Self destruct. Seller. Oh, Yakpunk turns around for the shatter here. Tries to charge back in. Oh, man, he gets a pin on the Gooshway. A bit inexplicably, a bit serendipitously, if you will. Serendipitously. There we go. Either way, what I'm saying is, Toronto's winning. 
this point B. And they're winning hard, though. Yeah, Four they're... minutes for point C. Uh, this feels great if you're a Toronto Defiant fan. Now they're back on track. No more shenanigans. Go ahead and take another map win. You know, Yakpunk should not charge into that box. It says Fragile on it. That's true. Payload. Come on, man. <laughs> you know better. I mean, they are throwing a large amount of gunfire around that box, though. That's so. a good point. Some strong wood. Making that crate. Here we go. Another grab coming in from Toronto Defiance. Uh, Self-destruct. The Reinhardt's gone. No kills on that one in the end, though. Maybe it pops that transcendence. Ooh, nice shatter from Yachtbong. Has he down? Stellar capitalizing. And they've got the sound barrier on the Toronto Defiant side as well to keep everybody up and happy. And yeah, it really, really does not get much faster on Rialto than this has been. Uh, you know, the, the Spark, they already lost this match. It was a long shot for them to make playoffs, but certainly losing a few more maps is not going to help their efforts. I don't think so. Sound barrier doesn't matter. Nobody can get there. That's going to be Toronto Defiant with one of the fastest takes I've ever seen on Rialto. That was a very fast time for Rialto. Yeah. Pretty ridiculous. Crazy. Ends with 305 for a map that is often a struggle to get through point A and B. It's got to be one of the quickest times we've seen on that map. I, I do believe it probably is. Neko with another death. So he is currently, I believe, at six deaths in this series. Now, the according to Captain Planet, our stats wizard, the record is currently seven. So he will. Wow. He has a chance here if he does not die on this defense to set a new record for a player who has played in all four maps in a series for fewest deaths. That's incredible. He's already set the record for the player that's allegedly forgotten to change his spray <laughs> for the longest time in Overwatch League history. So and then, and another... then he, he forgets when he puts the sorry spray on the ground that he's about to put a Boston Uprising logo right next to it. It could happen to anyone. <laughs> Truly coincidental. You can't predict that. Here we go, Neko. He doesn't. Pro he probably doesn't know it, but he might be about to set a record. Don't tell him. You're gonna make him nervous. Stop it. Oh, the Lavecchia Pescheria. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> the, the Dick Royko. Yes, Della. Yes. This Got is it. A truly fantastic attack. Ah, the oats, oh, the kerosene. <laughs> Observers, please. Oh, my favorite. Tetro del Canto Opera. Ah, yes. The beautiful voices of. The operettos. <laughs> wow. You know, you've even been to Italy. I think this is the I most have. embarrassing uh, part of this entire... I'm, I'm sorry. Don't hate me, Italy. <laughs> Herc, I know you're out there. I love your country. Don't hate me. <laughs> Uncle Spark on the attack now. Toronto Defiant. Obviously feeling uh, pretty happy about the way things have gone, aside from maybe the end of oh, the sky. Rokey. Yeah, Rokey. Oh, Rokey. Ooh, he got, he got chunked out. Couldn't actually... Yep. Wall right away in time. That means Defiant. They're not going to get a chance to really stop them at this first corner and instead have to wait for Roki's respawn. And it's going to be a long time fighting in this last choke, you have to think. I would imagine. Neko, though, already 63% of the way to a trans. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty solid. He's been able to uh, land a lot of that damage. And he has not given opponents a lot of times to take him out. Here we go. Shrek. Taking a lot of damage up front. They find out, oh, there goes Bezzy. Yakpunk with the kill with that fire strike, actually. And now Bebe feels a word, the world rather, closing it around. And we saw Envy on the D.Va start to fly up to the flank, and he started backing up right away. Gushwe down. And so we'll be Toronto Defiant holding here a little bit longer. Uh, well, Ivy has not even died this map yet. And we're at 30 Crazy. eliminations to seven for the Defiant. So Rialto, uh, some of these maps were quite close, especially that first one. This yeah. one, not so much. Well, that's a great sign for Ivy, though, too, because he did have some issues dying early on in some of the fights earlier in this series. So, I mean, yeah, it's one of those maps where maybe teams aren't playing most seriously, but you want to see less deaths out of the Zarya, for sure. Certainly delivering on that front so far. Right, just backing up. They're making the Hongshou Spark try and walk across this space. Uh, Ivy, boosting his way up, trying to find a place to put that grab. Waiting for the defense matrix. There it is, as soon as Rhea drops down, double defense matrix. And nice shatter. 
Ooh, no kills on his self-destruct there, aside from the one under Rhea, as he let loose his self-destruct. Right, so no remake possible for Rhea. This is going to be yep. another back off here from the Hong Joe Spark. Yeah. And Echo, How he's, many do you lose? he's closing in on that record, Noah. Sure is, man. Only a minute 40 left to survive. IDK down, trying to go for the, the cute boop at the end there. All right. Now I'm going to reset one more time. Echo on this Zenyatta. Hero that can be jumped on quite easily, but has been mostly ignored. I was going to say, for this a, match. for a record like that to be set, I would not have expected that to be on the Zenyatta. I believe Jonak has it right now. Oh, well, never mind that. But <laughs> Jonak is not, he's Jonak not a normal is Jonak. player. Yes, Jonak yes. is Jonak, yeah. He's basically like a, an if, Overwatch deity in himself. All right, so back again here for the Defiance. Stopping the payload, stopping any progress right now. Rally comes in from the spark. All right, here's where Toronto needs to dig deep. Oh, that's a stun on the Kushway. Backs away a little bit. Yakpunk down early. Ooh, it's a good start for the spark. There goes Stellar as well. Soundberry comes in for Toronto, but they got to back it up. They do not want to give up point A, though. Envy going to die on the cart. Try to delay as long as possible. Neko didn't die. No, he didn't. <laughs> he backed away. We're watching this one. This is what we want to have it here, but... Yep. Hong Joe Spark making it very difficult to get through the end of point A. Okay, so it's another three minutes on the time bank for them to finish B now. Yeah, Toronto uh, Defiant not giving up ground easily, however. Yeah, they want to try to hold the bridge. Ooh, Shatter just out of nowhere from Yakpunk. Who's straight down already? And it's a Lucio battle. Whoop, careful. Look, he's in trouble. Bezzy down first. IDK soon to follow. Mortal Kombat or Supportal Kombat! You got it, though. No, you got it yeah. there. Oh, <laughs> fight, fight! <laughs> oh, come on, Yakpunk, get out of there. Roki, you coward. Sorry. <laughs> Back you off. He gets into spot. IDK still having a little bit of fun right there on the side. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the rest of the match continues. Meanwhile, they have now pushed through the choke and they're going to be using oh, that. Total steam. Yeah, they're going to be using that Graviton Surge very aggressively right out of spawn. So Toronto decided now is the time to spawn camp the spark. Spawn camp the spark. Uh-oh. Yakpung doesn't have a Look shatter. Look out behind you, Yakpung. <laughs> uh, he tried. He tried with the fire strike. Yep. They try and prevent this drop down. Force them onto the bridge so that they have a chance of getting environmental eliminations. Exactly. So they can pull it off. Chance to knock people off the edge. Jake Godsby is wary of death from above. Grab. Goes for the grab. Not a lot of charge there. He is going to need to get a big self-destruct. And he gets Ivy. Roki down as well. So Toronto to fight. Oh. get some ground again. Neko, where are you? He's on the wrong side of the bridge. No, oh, no. Neko, <laughs> save him. He's the last one alive. Neko, no. The record. Oh. He can tie the record now. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> he can tie the record, but I'm, I'm disappointed. Well, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> somehow. We'll, we'll get through this somehow, Dawa. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. Well, IDK sitting there with the sound beer. Spark actually come out of that with a very healthy ult economy for this difficult corner to push around. As I said, Spark has a good chance to move this thing. Yeah, this is arguably the hardest corner to take. It's a 90 degree turn after a 90 degree turn. It's tons of cover for the defending team. Yep, exactly. They do push Toronto back though. Ooh, Yakpunk caught up in that, in that uh, Earth Shatter for Gushue. Let's give me another couple kills coming in. Toronto to buy it. In trouble again. Neko did not die. He didn't, and <laughs> back now. He has a respawn with the rest of the team, but they're not going to be able to defend this. So Spark methodically pushing through the map right now. Like, it's like I'm trying to tie a record, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I know you're saying die in the payload. I can't do that. <laughs> Still two minutes left. So Spark have avoided that full hold just narrowly. Now Defiance trying to prevent themselves from going into a time bank scenario. I mean, though they have plenty on the clock. It's only two minutes at the end of the day for Spark. And, you know, again, Taking it with 3.05 left is insane for Defiant. So Spark could easily get held here. They're going to try to move around the side and come up the stairs, it looks like. Yeah, charging up there with that speed boost. He got a little bit low. They backed off, though. Ivy has that Graviton Surge in there. They're going to send in Envy Self-Destruct, Sound Barrier, and some shielding helping out quite a bit there. I uh, couldn't quite knock it in enough, and now the Graviton coming through. Yep, that's right, Rhea. 
But the self-destruct a little bit late there, but it does catch Yakpunk. Maybe down as well, though. So in the end, Toronto Defiant getting a couple kills more. Godsby trying to respond, and Kushwe, he's got the shield still on the point. Neko fighting it out. No! He can't even tie it now! <laughs> Eight deaths for Neko in a series. Unlucky. Still a great performance. Yep. Will be record setting today, however. Spark continue moving towards the end. They have a one team fight left in them. They have a shatter. They're a team with a dream and a shatter right now. And another kill of the Echo, no! Oh, it's too late now. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> like Ushue, yeah, that's right. It's one of those Eye of the Kaiser scenarios. A little bit less of the stakes on the line, of course. But uh, <laughs> yep. needs, I'm just saying he needs to do a lot with his shatter. That's what I'm saying, all right? It's the, oh, he gets pinned against the wall, but Yakpunk bounces off the pillar himself. There he goes. He's down. A chance for Gushue. He dropped the shatter. He might have gotten stunned in the middle of that, but it doesn't matter because he's getting the kills anyway. They get the grab at the end. And guys, we're going to go into Time Bank. All right. Well, Time Bank is the spark. Just barely finished that map. All right. Well, the Spark get it done. They're not going to win this series, but they're at least putting a bit more pressure onto their opponents, onto Defiant. But remember, Defiant, ton of time in the time bank. We'll see what they can do with it when they come back. Time bank time as we check out the exhibits in this museum, which don't look very old. <laughs> that all looks like fairly new stuff. You. Maybe they discovered future. ancient alien ar artifacts, though, in the future. Aliens. That's right. No, man. It was made by robots. <laughs> <laughs> Those th These arts were made by robots? Yeah. That's right. It's performance art with Gushui swinging around the pillar like that. <laughs> yeah. Swap over to the Reinhardt. Postmodern performance are beautiful. Oh, IDK! What? What just happened there? <laughs> what did just happen there, what? Noah? <laughs> he, did, he didn't get knocked off. He just died. I am curious. Living up to his name. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened to IDK. <laughs> but it did slow the Hangzhou Sparks approach I right so. now. Well, they have 30 seconds remaining. IDK back with them again. All right, and we're gonna find out there, the mystery of IDK is about to reveal itself before and our eyes. And he, oh, oh, you missed the pillar. <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> Lucio wall writing accidents happen. It's, uh, I, you know, I play a lot of Lucio. It'd be like that sometimes. That's how it is. All right, well, Spark trying to get any distance they can. Three seconds, we're gonna be into overtime very shortly. Bebe's gonna have the Transcendence soon, but aside from that, not much. The charge, Yakpung taking Gushui for a ride. Everybody has to try to save the Reinhardt. Now Yakpung down. The wrong Reinhardt was killed, according to Toronto Defiant here. They are gonna struggle to stop this payload. Hangzhou Spark gonna get more distance. Well, Bebe had the Transcendence already, and I don't think yep. the Defiant expected that because they made an aggressive charge. He wanted to take. Gushui back into his team, Yakpung, but with the Transcendence there, easy to zip across that space, heal him up, and win the fight. Yep. Here we go. One more defense here on A for the Defiant. Rhea has self-destruct. Got to be nearly with that grab. All you have to do is get them off the payload. The, ex the overtime bars can expire so fast. There we go. Yakpung on the back of that Graviton Surge. Getting quite a few. They lose Ivy in Rhea's ensuing self-destruct but that's gonna be the end of this one pretty good push for spark considering the time they started with an idk just deciding to take a dive <laughs> at the beginning of that one but you know, that's it's a danger <laughs> lucio lucio lives a dangerous life he, he does he's wall riding you know 50 meters up into the air without yeah. any kind of safety equipment it's true just as futuristic rollerblades to support him. I know, that's that seems like a really risky thing to do, and death you know, is sort of inevitable. At you know, some point in time, you're gonna make a mistake. I'm glad to see that. You know why? Because you're skating around Venice, right? 
That's a lot of ancient buildings, right? They're having, you know, maybe they fix the flooding thing in the future, but to just ride around on the walls like that, to I deface <laughs> the ancient Renaissance properties Great like that, I'm glad he fell off. He deserved it. <laughs> Lu Lucio wow. is the great iconoclast of our age, man. <laughs> he destroyed all those marble railings, too. Yep, riding over paintings and stuff on the walls. Like, there's no stopping this guy. That's right. Attack Meanwhile, on board with the gondola. Ugh. <laughs> Feeling seasick already. And this is actually not a very pleasant experience. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's like the Blair Witch League now. <laughs> Gondola is just going in circles forever. Yeah, so look out! Oh, it's, it's okay. Oh, hey, it's this identical twin. <laughs> and, hey, it's this identical triplet. <laughs> I'm just Spark. Keep in mind here, Toronto Defiant have four minutes to try to push as far as Spark did. So. And they're not playing Winston this time. Okay. So, double sniper for Toronto Defiant. Or not? No. No. Nope, not. They're going back to 3-3. Definitely not. I think they would like to win this map, considering they drew the third one. Yeah, very true. IDK down again. There goes Bezzy. So Toronto wasting no time in taking out the spark and moving this payload. See ya. Rhea screaming. Wow. Well. <laughs> Hard to scream underwater. That's yeah, impressive. Diva actually. takes a dip, and now we get some quality emotes right. on the card. Play some tunes. <laughs> nice, but <laughs> just not close to the priceless artifacts. Lucio, please. All right, so coming back in for another defense here. Here we go. One last Joe Spark. Have to hold for three minutes here. Yep. See if they can do it. Here we go. Pushing in. Now they've got the shield on to Envy. Tries to build up a little bit more charge. Ultimate's building Neko very close to his transcendence. That payload is pretty much there. Can Spark stop them? Defiant just waiting it out. They can just keep poking. Ooh, going forward. Yeah, Quentin gets done, but it's going to be Yushe. That falls. Looks like Neko got his transcendence just in the nick of time to try to save people. Bebe responds with his as well. Self to start coming down. It gets two from behind. IDK taking out the fire strike, and that's the end of the map. And the end of the series, Toronto Defiant takes it on Rialto. And it will be a 3-0 victory after that draw on Volskaya. Playoff spot locked up for the Defiant. Could have been a bit cleaner here and there, but hey, they're in. Yep, five and two record. Should be a pretty high seed in the playoffs as well. Should Excellently done bad. in the inaugural stage sure for this new franchise team. Now we'll see if they can perform in the playoffs. You know, they, they get to sit out next week, too. They're done. Yeah, that's so right. A lot of time to prepare for their next opponents. Well, it's great. A little bit of time to rest. Uh, obviously, Overwatch League is a marathon. It's not a sprint, so a little bit of time to chill out, a lot of time to practice. I think they're going to be in great, uh, a great spot for the playoffs here. And it, it does impress me, again, just how well our expansion teams have done this stage, by and large. It's been cool to see. Has been very fun. Yeah, for sure. So a tough one for Spark, but that's a team where I think, you know, as the meta shifts, as we look ahead to stage two, that's going to be a team that just gets better with age. In the meantime, let's send it over to Danny, who has Roki standing by for an interview. Thank you so much, Toa. Everybody, give it up for Toronto Defiance and Roki. With today's win, they have now clinched a spot in the stage one playoffs. Roki. How ready are you for the stage one playoffs? <laughs> 자, 오늘의 승리로 인해 드디어 이제 토론토 팀이 프로업 진출이 확정이 되었습니다. 로키 선수, 얼마나 준비가 되셨습니까? 저희는 지금 연습한 걸로 우승할 준비까지 돼 있습니다. We are ready to win with the practices that we are doing currently. Are you 100% sure you could win, win this? 이거 확실히 100%일 거라고 확신하십니까? 네. Yes, he said yes. Alrighty. <laughs> Talking about the playoffs, uh, I was actually wondering, is there a team that Toronto Defiance and you personally that, that are looking forward to kind of beat in the stage one playoffs? So, the playoff is going to be a question for you. If we want to win this team, what team is there? New York Assassin. NYXL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All righty. I will leave you with that. That is a great answer. Good luck. Everybody give it up for Roki and Toronto Defiance one more time. With that being said, Back to you guys, casters. Here we go. Roki, a man of few words, but a man of many environmental kills. Let's take a look at the standings overall. Spark eliminated from stage one playoff contention with that loss. Meanwhile, Defiant clinched their spot in the stage one finals, currently sitting at third place overall, although 
I think that could change a bit, quite a bit of a big map differential between them and one and two. Yeah, that's true. And obviously, you know, we do have teams like the Fusion and the Fuel that have yet to play out the rest of their matches. Spitfire as well, capable of reaching up into that five and two position, depending on how things pan out true. Uh, for them. Rain also, and Rain still with a very good map differential. So a lot of movement still possible within these standings. Well, let's take a second to listen in on that winning moment for Toronto Defiant as they clinch that playoff spot. <laughs> Yeah, so basically what they were saying there was, uh, you know, it's over, it's over, it's done, we're going to the playoffs. So they knew what was up they with did. that. A lot of happiness, yeah, for the <laughs> Toronto De uh, Defiant team. And hey, even with that loss on Bull Sky, you're still in the playoffs. So yeah, reason to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, you know, for them too, having that extra week to prepare, I think is going to be really important for them. Yeah, I think uh, they, they have more. no games next weekend. They've got two weeks to prepare for their opponents and especially take a break. It can be very difficult uh, with the grueling schedule of the Overwatch League for a lot of these players. So having that week off, already being five and two, that is excellent for Toronto. Yeah, very true. Let's take a second now to take a look at our player of the match brought to you by Omen by HP. It's going to be the one, the only, Envy. Had a great, great map on uh, King's Row with that Sombra. A lot of credit. I think it was a toss-up between uh, Neko and Envy this one, but uh, Envy takes it today. Yeah, I think both of the players played very well, but I, what pushed them over the top in some tough situations was Envy Sombra because the first half of this series ended up being pretty close. And Envy was the, one of the major reasons why they were able to overcome it. Again, did have some of that Sombra play on Volskaya as well. That is a fat self-destruct. No kidding. Four people and a mech. He'll take that. Feels good. Envy, having a great day. And it's good to see uh, Envy do well, too. You know, he was on LA Valiant for a time uh, last year. He was very up and down on that team. But I think he settled into a very uh, comfortable spot here on Toronto Defiant. Both he and Neko have been uh, really good, I think, is leaders, veterans in the league, kind of leading this new uh, expansion team uh, to victory. So, hey, there you go. A great day of Overwatch League, guys. We're not done yet for this week. We're done for the day, but come back tomorrow. And we've got four more amazing series to see. Can't wait to watch along with you guys. Thanks for watching the Overwatch League. We'll see you tomorrow. Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. And by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right.